Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is episode number two of the diesel engine assembly for Caterpillar D2 number 5J1113. Uh, quick rundown of what's on the bench here. I have the four new cylinder sleeves. Uh, in the last video, we got the Cosmoline off of those, got them clean, got them prepped, ready to go. I also have four of the upper liner seals, cat number 2A5633, four brand new ones, and I also have a couple of good used ones back here. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. I may explain later why I save all the good used ones that I can find. Um, a few other tools, I've got this uh, puller bar that's going to come into play with some associated hardware and a depth micrometer. Now this is not the ideal tool for doing the measurements that I need to do on here. They do make a better one, but I don't have the better one, but this is what I have. And if you are used to using these things and are careful, they will certainly do the job. Looking at the block side of things now, of course, everything here has been cleaned and prepped. And I also temporarily installed five of the cylinder head studs right down the middle. They are going to aid in doing our liner protrusion check. Now, before we get going, I'm going to take this opportunity to preach at you guys just a little bit about how absolutely, vitally, critically important it is to have every one of these counter bores and block bores as clean as you could possibly get them. Since we're only dealing with a few thousandths of an inch protrusion on every one of these liners, uh, having these counter bores absolutely free of rust, crud, debris, dirt, uh, and burrs is absolutely critical. Um, Let's find it. You can see on this cylinder right here, just off the end of my finger, a little bit of a uh, shiny spot. That's one place where I found a burr, a little high spot. And it's easy to get little raised areas of material. When you're pulling those old rusty liners out, you have uh, debris and dirt and rust that can snag and pull. So that was one little high spot I had to take care of. This cylinder over here also had another one. Again, right off the end of my finger, you can see kind of that little bit of a uh, shiny spot right there. That was another high area I had to take off. Luckily, these were minor and did not go all the way across the uh, the face of the ceiling surface. Um, this is what I did. I did not take it to the machine shop. I've uh, kind of dealt with these a little bit before, so I have this broken off piece of a flat file. It's really good for getting in these tight radius areas, just kind of doing a little touch up repairs. That's what I used to make sure we didn't have any high spots on any of these counter bores. And if you've never, uh, really dealt with these before you really want to protect them You do not want to take too much material off Otherwise your upper copper sealing ring is not going to seal um, If you're all nervous take them to the machine shop before just attacking it and going all honey badger with a, <laughs> with a flat file on it I did that because these were minor I've kind of done this work before and I felt pretty good about it And the last bit of uh, talking I want to do here before we actually start doing something is to also make sure your lower Liner bores are as clean as you can get them um, you also have kind of a 45 degree lead-in chamfer at the top. That is for when you put the O-rings on the bottoms of the liners, it kind of guides them down into that uh, that straight walled bore. That's another area that you really, really, really want to have absolutely rust free, um, no scale, no pits, uh, preferably scratch down as close to bare metal as you can get. These bores down here are not bad. Granted, they're not pristine, but they're not horrible either. So feeling pretty good about this block, but that's your last area for these liners that you really, really they want to pay good attention to. So to start off we'll begin with number one cylinder, place the new copper upper ceiling ring down in that counter bore and then we will take the new liner minus the lower rubber seals. This is not a permanent install yet. We're just uh, assembling everything with that upper ceiling ring only to do a uh, protrusion measurement and these are a close enough fit in that lower bore that you have to have them pretty square to get them to slide down in. Now before I can do my measurement, I need to exert some down pressure on this liner to make sure that everything is well seated in the counter bore. That's why I installed temporarily these uh, head studs right down the middle of the block. So we'll take that polar beam, set down on the top, we have our hold downs that Go on top of the beam, flat washer on both of those, have these little round spacers, another flat washer on each of those, and then cap it off with a couple of the cylinder head nuts.
evenly and incrementally. Just exert some down pressure on that liner. You don't need a lot. We're not trying to crush that new copper seal. We're just making sure that we take up any slack that may be in there. Have a good positive pressure downward on that sleeve. So now we're ready to take some measurements. And what we're trying to determine is from the block deck surface here, how high is it to where the first step of this liner is. Uh, this first step is where the head gasket sealing ring is going to make it seal. And you want to have a little bit of protrusion up above the block deck on this first step of the liner. Now, every one of these liners I've pulled out of these D3400 engines up to this point have had from a four to five thousandths protrusion after everything's been crunched down with full head gasket, uh, cylinder head torque and everything. So we're gonna be a little bit higher than that now because we have not yet crushed that uh, copper sealing ring that's below this liner. But if we're anywhere within, I'd say anywhere, anywhere less than eight thousandths max, I'd be pretty happy with it. And this is where the depth micrometer comes into play. As you thread this upper thimble down, this little peg protrudes further and further from the lower machined surface of that base. And the corresponding graduations are what tell you what your overall depth is. When you have it zeroed out, that peg is absolutely flush with the machined base of this micrometer. Like I said, not the most ideal tool for this job, but I use these quite a bit and I know what I'm doing, I can make it work. So we'll take the base and perch it on that first step of that liner, exert good pressure there so we know we're only bearing down on the liner. And now we run the thimble down just until we feel that peg contacting the block deck surface and we are right at six thousandths protrusion right now. I am liking that. So I'm gonna check this liner in four locations, here, here, and then corresponding locations on the other side of the bar. So we're doing four evenly spaced locations. We're gonna get a good read for how this uh, liner is setting in the block, where high spots, low spots are, or if it's all flush. All right, four measurements done. I got six thousandths here, six thousandths there, six thousandths here, and about five and a half there, which is about as perfect as you could possibly ask for, for uniformity. And also considering uh, this copper ceiling ring that's underneath this liner has not been crushed down yet, you're gonna lose maybe a thousandths or so there when that cylinder head is fully torqued down. So that's gonna get us even closer to what that original four to five thousandths protrusion was with the original liners. That was just too easy. Um, that is, <laughs> In a perfect world, that's exactly how you want that to happen. So now that this liner with that ceiling ring checks out in number one cylinder, its home is now number one cylinder. But because this is not a permanent installation, it's got to be pulled back out. So I want to put this back in in the exact same place that it is now. And we have these little V marks that were stamped in here from the factory indicating camshaft side of the engine. I'll take this marker and I'll just put a little dot on the liner that's in register with that V mark. That way I can put this one back in in the exact same position that it's in right now. So now I can take the tension off of this liner, get the tools off, and I'll pull it back out of the block. Um, the reason I don't have any other liners in the block right now is because I don't want this bar to be bearing down on the liner next to it. I only want to be exerting pressure on this one liner. That way I know that it's putting even pressure on it and I'm maybe not too high or too low over here, which may throw my bar off. So it's kind of a, a one liner at a time kind of thing. Um, now for the reason why I save those old copper ceiling rings that go beneath the liners is, um, say you had one of these that was a little bit too high. Um, with a factory new ring that has not been compressed yet, you really have no way of getting that thing any lower. But if you have a good used one that's already been compressed a little bit, uh, you just have to anneal it with a torch, get it to about 600 degrees and let it cool. That softens this copper again. It's gonna be a little bit skinnier and it's gonna maybe set that liner down in a little bit deeper and hopefully get you within spec if a new factory unused one seems or ends up being a little bit too fat. So that's why I do keep these old ones on hand. Um, another problem I could have ran into was having one side of the liner a lot higher than the other. And if you run into that, you also have the option of 
pulling the liner out, rotating it in the bore, setting it back down, doing another check. Um, if that doesn't uh, correct the problem, you also have three other brand new liners here that you could substitute out and put into this hole and hopefully get something that's going to be in spec. Luckily, this one didn't give me any problems, but that's another reason why I marked this so that I can get the liner and that copper ring right back in the same position that they're in now when I go to put all these back in. We just gently get that liner back out of there, pull out the ring, and set our cylinder number one liner back on the bench with the rest of them. Ring goes back on it, right where it was underneath it. And that is now belonging to cylinder number one. And if I keep it everything in the same sequence on the bench as it is over there on the engine block, you can't get those things mixed up. So now we repeat the process three more times. All right, we have a dot on all four liners and luckily all four of them checked out. I kept a running log of the findings and you can see we have one, two, three, and four just as it's laid out on the block down there right now, just as these are arranged on the bench here. And my protrusion, like I said, pretty uh, even on number one from six to about five and a half. Um, had about six to seven on two, six, well, five to seven on three, and then we had uh, six to seven on four. Incidentally, three is the one that gave me the most trouble. I did have to go and rotate that liner 180 degrees in there and then clamp down again, recheck all the measurements, and it came out a lot better. I was running as high as eight thousandths on this side before and down to four or five here. It's like it was just a little bit uh, wonky in there, but rotating that around got them set pretty much to where I like them. So with my measurements as they are here, pretty much five to seven thousandths range with a little bit of crush when we put that uh, cylinder head on. It'll get me pretty close to the four to five that the old sleeves were in another spec. You usually, or at least I usually don't like to see more than a two thousandths max variance between all of your protrusion numbers. That's gonna keep even tension across that cylinder head. Um, really, this is looking pretty darn good. I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about these uh, measurements here at all. So hopefully this has been a pretty comprehensive rundown of the process, at least the process that I use for checking liner protrusion and a Caterpillar D3400 diesel engine. Um, threw a lot of specs at you guys, kind of some procedural stuff, but I wanted to get this uh, in the books, get it in the logs, so at the very least this video can be somewhat of a reference that I can uh, post to forums, do whatever, or just, you know, for anybody that wants to watch it. It's just a little bit more information to put in their back pocket. So we're going to wrap the video right here. Um, tune in next time for episode three. We'll get the bottom seals on those liners and get them pressed into that block. Hope to see you guys back for that.